With 3D printing, there's always the next level up. With the AnyCubic N3 Plus, we have cloud connectivity and an auto feed unit. And these are there to help streamline your process and get you printing more. But is it enough to make you upgrade from your previous printer? I'm James Hertz from MUO, and we're going to explore whether the AnyCubic N3 Plus will help you expand your printing horizons. Now at this stage, I want to introduce the N3 Plus and how it compares relative to other printers in the AnyCubic lineup. Now, it is more of a medium-sized printer, with the M3 Max being more of AnyCubic's large-scale printer. Now, in terms of statistics, it does have a printer size of 360 by 290 by 475 millimeters, and its build volume is 197 by 122 by 245 millimeters. Now, if this sounds familiar, it's because it's exactly the same as AnyCubic's Mono X 6K printer. So, in terms of what you're going to get in that regard, they do have similar results. Now, in terms of differences, there are some significant things that we're going to talk about, but one of the things that comes to mind first is it does have a difference in terms of max printing speed when compared to the Mono X 6K. So it can print at a max of 100 millimeters per hour compared to 80 millimeters per hour. Now, in terms of weight, it is mostly metal, so this printer comes out at around 26 pounds. So there's a little bit of weight to it, but it's not enough that you'll have any issue moving it around. Overall, you do have a very good quality build for this printer. So if you're looking at something like miniatures to medium-sized models, it's a very durable unit that you can work with. So like the AnyCubic Photon X 6K, it does have a 9.25 inch monochrome 6K screen and 34 microns of accuracy. But unlike the Photon X 6K, there is a different light source. AnyCubic has released a new light source, the Light Turbo Light Matrix, which allows for light uniformity of over 92%, and overall just gives more light power so you have more precise printing results and overall better prints. Now, besides the actual screen of the printer, I wanna talk about the touchscreen for operation. Now, I'm used to these being smaller and not really great for my hand size, but with M3 Plus, we have a five inch color touchscreen. Now, overall, it's very brightly lit and very responsive to your touch. Overall, I was really pleased with it and navigating between the main categories on its main screen was very fluid. Now, my only minor complaint is once you actually do select something and get into the submenus, it doesn't feel like the interface scales up to what it should. Instead, the text is a little smaller. But in terms of actual touch responsiveness, everything is good there. So if you've ever had complaints about wanting the touchscreen to be bigger, it is very usable on M3+. Plus. So let's move on to talking about the build plate for the N3+. Plus. Now, in terms of more medium-sized printers, it's a pretty standard size. Now, when compared to the likes of Frozen's Sonic Mighty 4K, it has about an eighth of an inch bigger. So if you're trying to squeeze that less bit of a model support or detail on the build plate, you do have that advantage. Now, also, it does have a laser engraved checkered pattern like the Photon Ultra at the very bottom of it. So you do have that improved printing adhesion and easier peel off for models. Now, when compared to the Photon Ultra, I found it even easier to remove models and I didn't get as many scratches despite doing more prints faster with it. I don't know if this was due to the larger surface area or simply that there was more room to pry a model off with a scraper. But overall, until I was many prints in, I really didn't notice much scratching on the build plate, but there was no problem removing any models. Now, in terms of actually leveling this build plate, I found it to be just as smooth as the Photon Ultra. When using AnyCubic's included leveling paper, it was a simple process of following the instructional prompts and just making sure you had enough pressure on the build plate while cross-tightening the actual screws in place. So if you've ever been concerned about getting the initial leveling right, it's again a very simple process. So after the build plate, let's talk about the VAT and the included FEP. Now, when it comes to the VAT, it is held flush to the actual screen via two screws. These are relatively easy to remove. And once you do have the actual screws removed, it's just a matter of lifting it up. Now, in terms of the VAT's build quality is an all metal VAT. This is usually a cost cutting measure where you might run into plastic VATs where you could separately purchase a metal one, but the N3 Plus comes with a metal one by default. 
It does have two max lines on either end of the vat, so it's very easy to tell what your resin level is, as well as a quick pour spout to get the resin out. Now, when it comes to the FEP, it came with more of an opaque FEP, but I had no issue with the light actually coming through. In terms of other things, it held up really well for the prints I was working with. I usually ran a lower lift speed, so I was doing longer prints, sometimes up to 30 hours based off the print size, and it held up well for continual prints of that length. So overall, I really had no issue with the actual quality when it came to printing between these two, and I do feel you get a lot of value with them. So let's talk about the unique features of the Anycubic N3+. Plus. Now the place to start here is with the auto feed unit. Unless you've looked at the Elegoo Jupiter, there's not many auto feed units on the market. Since this is another thing you do have to assemble and attach to the printer, I want to talk about it since you need to keep this in mind. Now first off, there is the actual auto feed unit and there's not much you have to actually do with it itself. There is a black cover on the printer and after you pry it off, you pull the wire through and attach it to the bottom of the unit. Now where it gets more interesting is the actual cap for the auto feed unit. At the back, there is a bracket that holds a one kilogram Anycubic resin bottle and there is an attached cap where you attach two tubes to actually feed the resin to your vat. There is the black feeding tube as well as a translucent white airline tube. Now, in terms of actually getting these on, you do want to make sure they're snug so you don't have any resin leakage. And when you actually pull them through the back, there is some actual tightness on the tube, so you wanna make sure there's enough gravity and looseness that they can actually dispense resin appropriately. Overall, assembly doesn't take too long, but you do wanna make sure you get it right. So let's talk about the auto feed unit in practice once you have it set up. Now, first off, once you do have it actually hooked on and the vat is pressed against it, the sensors are gonna be in your resin. So when these sensors touch resin, you're not gonna have a red light lit up on the unit. But when resin is lower than that, it's going to put the red light on and tell the auto feed unit to feed every five minutes normally until it's full up. Now, in terms of how this actually works, you're basically paying attention to whether the red light is on or off and identifying problems from there. In terms of the tubing, you do want to watch for that to make sure there's no clogs in the line. And also you do want to make sure you have sufficient resin. Now on the actual printer screen, it will tell you in advance when going under the auto fade, whether or not there is sufficient resin in the bottle. Otherwise the auto feed unit won't work. Overall in practice, let's talk about how actually practical it is. I've adjusted the speed between the lowest setting, which is 20% and up to 100%. And overall, I've gotten fairly similar results over a long printed time. So when going at 20%, it dispenses slower, so you have less of a splash issue. But if you do 100%, it's going to fill up pretty rapidly, and you're going to get more splashing, which can make a bit of a resin mess. Now, in terms of the longer printing period, though, I ran into one consistent issue when I left the auto feed unit on the entire time. It always overfilled the vat above the max line. It never got to the point that it actually poured over onto the screen, but it was enough that I could not do another print consecutively afterwards, even if it was successful. I would always have to empty the vat out and go from there. Overall, what I do advise with the auto feed unit is you don't treat it as something you just turn on and forget. Typically, I do a lot of overnight prints, so I found it most useful when I would monitor during the daytime and have the auto feed unit on. So I would refill the vat, but also I would be able to push the button and disable auto feed before I left the printer alone for the rest of the evening. If you're using the auto feed unit, I do advise it this way. I'm hoping in the future, maybe any cubic can include an option where you can disable it from mobile devices and you don't actually have to do it from the printer screen itself. But for right now, that is a small limitation of it. Obviously, as more auto feed units are being tested on different printers, there's going to be more evolutions. But if you do manage it carefully, it is a useful addition right now. So let's move on to talking about networking options as well as any Qubit Cloud, the unique addition of the N3 lineup. Now, first off, there is an Ethernet port on the side of the N3 Plus as well as a wireless antenna that you can attach. Now, when you are gonna get any Qubit Cloud, it's advised to download the any Qubit Cloud app first. Now, after doing so, you're going to need to add your printer to the app. To do so with M3 Plus, you do need to install a firmware update first, otherwise it's not gonna recognize the printer, whether you're using the QR code or manually entering the machine number. Now from here, you are 
given access to the AnyCubic Cloud workspace. So when you slice a file via AnyCubic Slicer, AnyCubic Workshop, you're able to send the file either to the desktop or you can send it to a USB stick. You can set it to the printer for remote printing or you can also send it to the cloud. Now when sending it to the cloud, this leaves all your print files freely available. Now the strength of this comes not so much in a single printer, but if you're running multiple printers of the N3 lineup, you can really schedule multiple jobs. So if you have someone helping you out, this can allow you to send things directly and they don't have to learn every single step of the process but they can prep the printers for you. Similarly, if you're just doing it as a single setup, you're able to take advantage of it for actual monitoring purpose. The AnyCubic Cloud app records when your printer is actually printing, how many jobs you've completed successfully, and how many jobs you've terminated. Overall, it's an interface that allows you to manage your apps and allow closer connectivity to the printer. Now, there are a few ways it does this, and there are some shortcomings of it. So we're gonna talk about those in turn. Now, one strength I want to touch on is that the AnyCubic N3 Plus also supports a camera. Now, a camera is not included when you purchase the printer, but AnyCubic provided me one for testing. Now, what happens is you are connecting this camera very much in a similar way to the auto feed unit. There is a single black cover there, and once you pry it off, you're going to pull the wire forward and attach it to the back of the camera. Now, when actually setting up this camera, there are a few things to keep in mind. It's not really swivelable once you actually have it secured. So when you're actually figuring out your Vantage, you can't do anything like preview it in advance via the AnyCubic Cloud app. It's only accessible when you're actually doing a printing job via AnyCubic Cloud. So you're going to need to figure out the field of view a bit instinctively from there and adjust afterwards as needed. Now, as a downside to it, I was a little disappointed that you could not only access the AnyCubic Cloud camera when printing via the app, but also the fact that you can access it from Photon Workshop. All Photon Workshop shows you when you have a print job active via AnyCubic Cloud is that your printer is busy and that's in use. So overall, the camera options are a little limited, and also I did run into some bugs. Now, most of the bugs I had with AnyCubic Cloud revolved around this camera. The camera would just not turn on at different times, and when this was happening, it would come up with different errors. First off, I had two jobs recorded as terminated based off the camera. The camera would say that the print job had been terminated when it was in fact running, and it would record in the app. Now, with this, what I would have to do is actually quit out of the app and go back in to get my actual process back up. But the camera was a little finicky. Overall, what I would have to do when this error popped up was I would have to disconnect the actual internet connection and reset it on the printer itself. Now, this was an annoying thing, especially when doing a current print job, so I would like that bug fixed in the future, but overall it's a relatively minor affair and I only had it happen a little bit. Now, in terms of other things with AnyCubic Cloud, there is some things to keep in mind. When you're actually sending the files to the cloud, you similarly have to download them to the printer after they're there. So during this process, I did run into one other small bug, which was it partially sent the file over, but not completely. So when the printing job began, it immediately terminated and recorded as terminated. So to do this, I had to actually go on the printer go under remote files where I had downloaded from cloud and delete it and repeat the process again. But overall with AnyCubic Cloud, it's a really smooth process. There are some bugs that need fixing, but these are relatively minor and probably can be knocked out relatively quickly. So if you're using AnyCubic Cloud to stay connected to your printer, whether for jobs or if you want to monitor over time with the camera to see if things like your supports are holding up is a great feature that will keep you closer at hand to your prints without actually having to be stuck next to the printer at any given time. So AnyCubic Cloud is a great addition, but you do need to make sure that you're ready for some bugs and hiccups during the process. Now, with the talk of AnyCubic Cloud, I want to return to slicers. Now, by default, you're going to want to download Photon Workshop. If you have any intention of using AnyCubic Cloud, you're going to need to use it to send files over that way. Now, if you do want to modify your prints or do custom supports, Lychee Slicer does support the N3+, and you can also just export something via Chitubox as well. 
As always, I do find Photon Workshop to be more of a simplified slicer, so if you're wanting to be more precise with your models, I would do so elsewhere. But overall, it is very good when it comes to integrating with any Cubic Cloud. So if you're doing something like pre-supported models and just loading them in there, there's not going to be much tweaking. Overall, slicer support was pretty fluid, and I had no complaints with Photon Workshop with this release. Now let's move on to talking about print results and print quality with M3+. First off, it is a 6K printer, so you're going to get an upgrade over 4K printers. Now, in terms of this upgrade, you may have to study it to actually notice the slight variations in the prints. But overall, there is an added smoothness on every single model that I've dealt with. Now, the results may not be significant enough for everyone, but if you're a first-time buyer willing to spend a little more on the printer, you can obviously go for this quality straight off the bat. But you're still going to have to compare whether you're going with 4K quality, 6K quality, or wait on 8K printers that are arriving on the market. Now, I also wanted to test different resins with the new light source on the M3+. Plus. Now, in general, I find any Cubix resin to be more liquidy, whereas a rival resin like Frozen's to be more viscous. In both cases, I really had no results working with either. In the case of any Cubix Craftsman resin, I was really impressed with the detail that was captured with it. Now, for testing, they provide both white and beige resin. I also had some apricot resin left over, and between the various prints, I had really good results. Now, sometimes you'll get some issues with small batches of resin, but I didn't really run into it here. Now, when printing with another resin, I got really good results. So overall, you can pick your favorite resin and really get good results with the M3+. Plus. So if you're after a quality upgrade and you're willing to pay a little more, the M3+, Plus does deliver really great results with its 6K. So at this juncture, the question is whether you should purchase the M3+. Plus. Now, if you've recently purchased any Cubix Photon X 6K printer, you might find the quality similarities between both the 6K resolution and the same print volume to be just enough that you won't want to upgrade. But if you're after something like a secondary printer and you want more connectivity via something like any Cubic Cloud, then this might be a reason to upgrade. Similarly, if you're interested in starting a printing network for your models, you can take advantage of the AnyCubic M3 line. Obviously, since this is a monochrome printer, there is a working limit on the screen and you will have to deal with things like changing out the FEP. But if you're dealing with 3D printing, this is pretty normal unless you're dealing with something like a DLP printer. Overall, the N3 Plus is a good investment if you're getting started out and you don't have a different printer on hand. And similarly, if you just want to upgrade a little bit. There is a lot of value with N3 Plus and if you're after a medium sized printer, you really can't go wrong with it. I want to thank AnyCubic for providing the M3 Plus testing unit and for providing some of their Craftsman resin. Now, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and head over to makeuseof.com for our in-depth written review on the M3 Plus.